nice sweater. Oh, thank you, John. Everybody looks nice, including baby Yoda. Good. <laughs> Good morning, folks. People are coming into the room right now. So we're going to give it a few seconds. Um, since we opened the door, we want to give time for everybody to get, get through the door. Um, so hang out with us just for a few seconds and we will get started very soon. Good morning, everybody. Good to see some, some familiar names and some new names. So that's exciting. Have some new folks with us this morning. Okay, Commissioner, it looks like we've kind of had a slowdown of folks coming through the door. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Great, Michelle, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the monthly Wellington, Waverly, Buckeye, and all points in between, uh, our monthly community conversation. Uh, as you know, I'm John Kafalis. I'm the, the commissioner from District 1. And in a moment, I'll turn it over to Michelle to just to clarify how folks can participate, attendees. Uh, our agenda for today is um, we have all three commissioners here. We did a moment ago. And, um, <laughs> but, but the idea would be to um, uh, introduce my colleagues, Kristen and, and Jody, and give them a chance to say a few words uh, as, as, long as, they, as much as they wish to share. And then once they're done, I have some updates that I'd like to provide to folks. I'll try to get through that quickly. And then we'll basically open it up to you know, what, what it is that um, more information that you folks need or other questions or issues that you wish to, wish to raise. So that's our agenda for today. And Michelle and, and colleagues, please remind me that before we end today's community conversation, I, I wanna make sure I ask the question, are there any particular people uh, with uh, subject matter expertise that you'd like us to invite for the next one, which would be, you know, on the first Thursday in March? So I want to make sure I ask that question. So I'll turn it over to Michelle now. And, and again, thanks all, all of you for taking time on a Thursday morning. And I appreciate my fellow commissioners joining us. Michelle, would you give us the, uh, the uh, information we need to participate in this meeting? course. Good morning. Thank you, Commissioner Cabalas. Good morning, everybody. My name is Michelle Bird. I'm the Public Affairs Director here at Larimer County. And today I am your Zoom host. So that basically means I'm the IT help around this part. Um, you'll notice today we're using maybe a little bit of a different platform than some of you have used before. It's called Zoom Webinar. It's a little different than the typical Zoom meeting you use for work or maybe you have happy hour with your friends these days via Zoom, um, but you'll notice there's no chat box that you guys can, can access. Instead, you'll see there's a Q&A button at the bottom. Um, that's the primary way we tend to, we tend to um, engage during these meetings, is anytime you have a question, feel free to type it into that Q&A box. However, that's not the only way. Um, you can also raise your hand. You'll notice that there's a, there's a raise hand feature there down at the bottom. If you want to chat with us, you'll just go ahead and, and click on that button and it'll let me know that you want to ask a question. And then I'll walk you through the steps of, of asking us the question. I do see that we have someone called in this morning. So you can participate as well. Um, if you want to ask us a question, just hit star nine. Um, and that'll let me know that you want to chat with us and I will then walk you through that process. So with that, Commissioner, I'll turn it back to you. Great, thank, thank you kindly, Michelle. Uh, as I said a moment ago, I'd like to now uh, introduce my two Commissioner colleagues, uh, Kristen Stevens and Jody Shattuck McNally. Uh, I think we'll start with Kristen and I will, um, you know, please introduce yourself and, and maybe share how the first month or so together has been, or actually three weeks, it's not been quite a month. Welcome colleagues. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Kafalis. And um, hello, everyone. I'm Kristen Stevens, and I was elected in November to uh, serve District 2 as a county commissioner in Larimer County. I'm really honored to um, receive uh, the votes to be able to represent uh, folks in Larimer County. Uh, before serving in this position, I was on the Fort Collins City Council for almost six years. I served as a council member for District 4, so I live in southwest Fort Collins and um, also served as the mayor pro tem for the past couple of years. So um, I think that 
it's been great. Uh, you know, it's weird getting elected in November and then waiting a couple months to start your job. So I was winding down my position on city council and I worked at CSU um, and now embarking on the exciting adventure of being a Larimer County Commissioner. And I think that, the, you know, John uh, was asking about the past four weeks, how those have been. And, you know, there's been a, it's been good. It's been a, a big learning uh, curve. It's been, you know, it's kind of like anyone who's started a new job, you know, you're learning where the restrooms are and how to print stuff out on the printer and, and, you know, get your bearings and, and, and trying to learn a new job. But hopefully um, I'm a quick learner and, and will um, have done a lot of reading. And so I'm really enjoying the work. And we had updates yesterday about, um, about the fire and about the work that's being done on mitigation and helping folks get back on their feet um, because of the fires. And so, you know, there are a lot of big issues that we're dealing with clearly with COVID and the fires and, and then, you know, the state of the economy. And so, um, you know, along with many other issues, but I'm happy to be here today to listen to what you have to say and, and see how we can help you and if we can get some of your questions answered. But um, yeah, just delighted to, to be here early this morning to, uh, to see what folks um, have on their minds. So thanks for having me. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Kafalis and Chris and Commissioner Stevens. Um, Michelle Bird, thank you for facilitating this this morning. Um, welcome everyone. I have attended these in the past, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm very excited to be here again. My name is Jody Shag McNally. I'm the commissioner for District 3. Um, as you know, we all, you vote for all the commissioners in all the whole um, county. And so I'm very I'm proud to also feel I represent you all as well. And I'm very glad to be here this morning to listen and learn. And I'm always available and accessible to you all um, to have any questions. Um, I feel our first three weeks has been great. Um, I always joke that there is no honeymoon phase with this job, which is great. I think we got sworn in an hour later, we were in a meeting voting and making decisions. And I'm very um, excited and proud um, to do that work. And I feel really good about the work we've been doing. Um, some of the, um, the subject matters I've already been following for the last four years through my work in the Behavioral Health Center to get that initiative passed and the work I've done on Office on Aging and other um, the, the comprehensive meetings I've been attending um, through the process through 2017 and on. And so um, I feel really good about what we've been um, doing and talking about and gelling together as a team as Board of County Commissioners. Um, I've read through, well, I think I've read through probably about 800 emails in the last two weeks. Um, so it, just know that if you email me and I don't get back to you, um, it's, I have a lot of emails, but also it's because some of the subject matter, I cannot um, respond to your email because it's due to the uh, matter being in litigation. And we've been advised and that if we want to maintain our ability to vote as a board of county commissioner on some of those subject matters that we're not able to reply to that since it is in litigation. Also, um, I've talked to, um, dozens of folks over the last three weeks about their concerns over the phone. Um, and I, I'm really glad to make that contact with constituents and they have been from all over the county. So thank you for contacting me. I, I really appreciate hearing from you and hearing about your concerns and your ideas and thoughts. And again, Commissioner Kafalis, thank you for inviting us to your community conversation this morning. I'm really proud to be here and to be with um, Chris, Commissioner Stevens. Sorry, Kristen, <laughs> I'm used to calling you Kristen. Um, and I'm just really glad to get to work with um, these two great folks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think we'll go with first name basis for, for now. Uh, thank you, uh, Jody and Kristen. I appreciate that. And I'd, I'd like to spend a little bit of time updating folks on some things that I think you'll be interested to know about. And then, well, as I said, we'll open it up. And now you've got all three of us here who can uh, respond to your questions or, or uh, make sure that we follow up with, uh, you know, informed answers. You know, one thing I, uh, off the bat, I'd like to quickly mention is that um, one of the things that the three of us need to do actually with Michelle Bird, our public affairs director, is to uh, spend a little more time uh, thinking about our overall uh, strategy for community outreach. I know that each of us is going to, has already begun, and I've been doing this, you know, individual uh, listening sessions or community conversations, but we want to have a conversation about that and determine, you know, what's the best way to 
connect with folks. Uh, you know, we used to do town halls where the three of us would be present uh, back in the day, like at the public libraries. So if you have any thoughts or inputs, uh, input on, on how we can best um, uh, interact with folks in the community, please let us know. And that would inform our conversation about community outreach. And, and, and so with that said, the first thing I'd like to mention as far as by way of update is that if you haven't already read the newspaper, uh, in terms of COVID-19, uh, our overall, our key metrics relating to hospitalizations, relating to uh, what's referred to as the positivity rate, and, and then the, um, the incidence rate per 100,000, positive cases per 100,000, those metrics have been trending in a very good direction. And uh, because of that, because we've been below that 350 per 100,000 threshold, as of yesterday, uh, over 300 businesses, including restaurants and other kinds of businesses, 330 um, that have been certified through our Level Up program. And I believe that includes businesses, of course, in the town of Wellington. But those businesses can now operate at a level yellow, uh, the next level down, which basically means that they can, if it's a restaurant, for example, they can operate at a higher capacity rather than up to 25%, it's up to 50%, and uh, they can't exceed 100 folks indoors, indoors, uh, not under a heat lamp necessarily. Um, and, and so that's a, I think that's a big deal. And, and again, all of our numbers and our public health numbers are, are, very, are very good in terms of moving in, in the direction. Our 14-day um, our positivity rate, I, it, it went below 5%, I think we're at 4.8%. And overall, since the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic started in Larimer County on March 9th, uh, we're at, I think we're at like 6.2% or something, but maybe actually lower. So that's, in my view, that's obviously very good news. The second quick update is regarding um, uh, the Cameron Peak Fire uh, recovery. And um, in terms of the work of our Office of Emergency Management and our director, Lori Hodges, uh, the good news is that um, we were approved, at least partially, for a FEMA, uh, well, ma major disaster declaration. And that basically allowed the, the county to work with the state and the feds uh, to access what are called public assistance funds uh, to help with you know, some of the public infrastructure issues related to the Cameron Peak fire. Uh, we learned yesterday in a work session that was broadcast and you know you can access that if you like, that was at um, 2.30 yesterday. Uh, we had a, a really good presentation, but a lot of the focus is gonna be on, on debris removal, uh, uh, de dead and hazardous trees that might uh, you know, create blockages in, in some of our uh, water bodies, our streams and our rivers. So, so that's, that's important and there's more, there are more details to that, but we are making progress on securing the necessary resources, you know, to help with um, uh, recovery efforts related to the Cameron Peak fires, and we're we're also looking at other kinds of uh, programs that are available for um, uh, emergency uh, um, of protection of our watershed, their watershed programs, and a variety of other things. So that's the second update uh, regarding the um, what we call the strategic plan. Uh, the five-year strategic plan. I, I just wanted to share a little bit about that. And, and I think folks know that, uh, for example, I am the uh, what's considered the executive sponsor, the commissioner sponsor of goal number two, which deals with economic opportunities. Uh, goal number one is infrastructure. And that's, I believe that's, that's J Jody, right? Yeah, Jody Shaddock McNally, goal number one, and then goal number three uh, deals with how do we uh, innovate in terms of providing services uh, you know, to folks as, as our demographics and our population change. But on goal number two, there are four objectives. One of them deals with affordable housing. And we've made a lot of progress in terms of our affordable housing objective. But the thing I wanna share with you, and perhaps Michelle can put this link in the, uh, uh, in the, um, in the chat, is that, um, and it's in the newspaper today, but we are doing a concerted outreach effort. We have this survey, it's a, it takes about 10 minutes to complete, but it's, it's really seeking input from all sectors of our community 
about affordable housing challenges and, and ideas that folks have on, you know, on, on solutions. That particular survey, there's a group that we're working with out of Denver called the uh, Roots uh, Policy uh, or Organization. And they do a lot of policy analysis and they've been working with us to determine, you know, what is the proper role for, um, for the county to help address some of these things. And, and uh, thanks to Michelle, she put in that link uh, larimer.housingimpactlab.com or something like that. So please take the time uh, to complete that survey. Please share that with other folks. We really want to hear from urban and rural folks. You know, what are some of the issues related to housing? And we all know that um, that that's a serious, you know, whether it's on, it's a serious issue, whether it's on the rental side of things or certainly on the home ownership side of things. And that survey will be live uh, through the month of February. Uh, so I wanted to share that, and, um, and and definitely there's other progress that's happening, you know, within goal number two on econo uh, economic opportunities. Goal number one, and I don't want to steal any thunder away from Jody, but the thing I wanted to mention there in particular that's relevant for folks in Wellington is that on Monday at a work session, uh, as part of goal number one, objective number four, we received an update on the... Um, on the box elder, um, uh, the, the box elder B dams, and and many of you know that um, there are various dams that were built back in the 70s and early 80s. They're flood control dams. So we received the works uh, an update on that, and there's really good progress. And of course, Wellington has been part of that stakeholder group. But the essence of that is that um, initial analyses that determine we were going to have to spend. Uh, you know, because Wellington, the population of Wellington has grown dramatically, uh, and, and originally these, these uh, flood control dams were built uh, to help um, protect farmers and ranchers uh, from any 100-year uh, flood type event, of event, but the risk assessment was increased, you know, high hazard dams, you know, primarily because of the population growth up in that part of the, the county. Uh, there, there were a, a further analyses, and then the... Um, the state also looked at some different kinds of modeling, but ultimately, in going instead of uh, having to spend millions and millions of dollars uh, to um, make sure that these dams would not breach in the in the event of a hundred-year flood, uh, now we're looking at uh, uh, hundreds of thousands, two hundred thousand dollars to install monitoring equipment, and then about a twenty-five thousand dollar price tag to maintain this monitoring equipment. So. You know, one of the next steps is to work out an intergovernmental agreement with the town of Wellington and the other towns and cities that are part of this Timnith Port Collins. So I wanted, you know, I wanted folks to have an update on that. I think there's a lot of good news there. And again, we're talking about uh, the B2 dam, which is on the Box Elder Creek, the B3 dam, which is on Coal Creek, and then the B4 uh, dam, which is on Indian Creek. So, so there is some progress there. Um, the, o the only other things I'd like to mention really quick is... Uh, um, let's see. We also had a work session this week. We've had a lot of work sessions this week, but something that I think is of interest to folks is um, the work we're doing in the in the behavioral health services arena. And again, Jody is on the uh, uh, behavioral health policy council as a commissioner, and she can speak to all of this. But um, uh, we we uh, had a, a work session, and there's another effort underway, and you'll learn more about that down the road. Uh, but the effort is to look at the behavioral health facility, you know, which uh, which is which the construction on that will begin, uh, in, I think, in March of this year. And and if all goes well, uh, the the goal is to have that operational by, uh, I think, the fall of 2022 or sometime in 2022. But what we're undertaking is um, wanting to get community input on on ideas for naming the facility. And the overall branding of, of you know the um, the behavioral health services that we'll be providing, uh, we we want to make sure, of course, that it reflects you know the community because the voters approve the the money for this, and and is it reflecting ad adequately, inclusively the, the the values and priorities of our community. So that's that's really cool. And on the another topic is the solid waste recovery, and uh, you know Kristen serves with me on the. Um, policy council there but the qu one quick update there colleagues and and we could invite this person to the next meeting if you're interested 
but we now have hired a director of our um, solid waste department. And, um, and, and so that person is on board and we haven't met him yet, but we will be meeting him soon. And we are making progress with um, uh, you know, the, the, the master plan, this, the solid waste master plan. And in particular, you know, we had a groundbreaking for the transfer station on Trilby Road, and we're moving forward with uh, other quote tier one projects. And of course, uh, you know, one of the things I asked for recently was to get an update on, on, um, on how we're addressing the, the, the transportation issues uh, related to uh, uh, trash hauling trucks that would bring trash from the, uh, you know, the transfer station on Trilby up to the, the new landfill site. And, and we certainly can answer questions on that. And then last but not least, and so much for being brief, but I, I tried, um, it, it, it's also important for folks to know, and I know that Fire Chief Green is on, on, the, on, the, um, on the meeting, and he is a member of our Larimer County uh, Planning Commission, uh, but we are gonna be starting uh, the process of the phase two of updating the land use code. And, and there will be opportunities for the community to engage because that's really important to us. I think it's important to all levels of government that folks have a chance to engage, but we are gonna be starting that. And one step in that process, well, there's been a lot of stuff already happening, but one step in that process is that uh, there is a joint work session next uh, Wednesday, February 10th, I believe, in the evening uh, between with the planning commission and the Board of County Commissioners. And we'll get a, a more detailed um, a presentation on, on some of the next steps involved with uh, you know, working through phase two. And that deals with everything from diversity of housing options you know, to landscaping, I mean, a variety of things. And um, that would be the last thing I'll share with you. Well, that's all I have. And at this time, I think it would be, uh, if folks, I know there are some, there's at least one question in the chat or there's a link there and there's some Q&A. Michelle, can you help us out here? Absolutely, Commissioner. And I, I'm i already getting a couple questions in regard to NISP. So I think we should um, address that first. So um, as I'm sure many of you know, um, the NISP decision has gone into litigation. Um, so because of that reason, the commissioner specifically cannot comment or have discussions about that decision. Um, I see two, two here that one specifically um, that wants an update on this. Um, so I just want you guys to know it's not that the commissioners are avoiding the conversation. Um, they, they just cannot comment on subjects that are in, in litigation right now. Um, and it's for very good reason. It's, it's so that they can um, maintain the ability to make a decision um, if, if it were ever to come back. So, um, Sherry, you had asked that question about NISP, um, and so I just, we're not ignoring you. We recognize that you asked the question, um, and they just, they can't um, talk about that right now. And Gail kind of had a two-part question. Um, it looks like um, she did ask a little bit about NISP, so we'll skip over that. But I think it's valid to recognize um, kind of the first part, which is she's very concerned about water issues and agricultural survival because of the needs of growing cities, especially Wellington. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that that viewpoint got out there and, and she was heard that way. She doesn't necessarily have a question. Um, I'll but, skip over the NIST part, but go ahead, yeah, Commissioner. Thank you. And I'll, I'll quickly comment and then Jody, if you wanna add anything, but what I was gonna say in response to, to Gail's comment, or at least the second part is that, um, in our strategic plan, in that goal number one that deals with infrastructure, in objective number four, which includes the, um, you know, resolving the matters with the V dams, uh, there's also another in objective four, which deals with watersheds and water storage and flood control and all of that kind of stuff. There is um, um, an item in there that uh, deals with um, exploring and, and looking at ideas related to water sharing agreements. And, and so, Certainly water infrastructure, water quantity, water quality are part of the five-year strategic plan. And I can, I, I, correct me if I'm, I'm not right here, Jody or, or Michelle or Kristen, I believe, um, so on these three goals, we're getting these updates. We get these quarterly updates and we just had one on the, on the housing stuff and the goal number two, but uh, goal number one on infrastructure uh, and you can go to us, our 
website, and I bet Michelle will put up the strategic plan link. Uh, but it, the, the next update is on goal number one, and that is scheduled for February 22nd, I believe. Uh, I, I believe it's in the afternoon or something. But, but folks can, can look at that and, um, and listen in and, and Gail, that, see if how adequately that, you know, our efforts are addressing some of the questions that you raise about what, you know, water storage and things of that nature. I, I hope that's helpful. Sorry, Commissioner. So many buttons during these Zoom meetings. Okay, so I don't see any other questions open at the moment. So I'm looking at my participant list to see if anybody has their hand raised. I don't see any yet. Um, oh, Clayton Roth has his hand raised. So Clayton, what I'm gonna do, I'm pressing the allow you to talk button. And now you're gonna have to unmute yourself, Clayton. And okay. you should be able to go. I think so. Yeah. You might go hear ahead. my kid on the background, so. Um, so I just wanted to kind of touch base with the commissioners on, uh, the regards to the Horton feedlot up there, um, since uh, litigation is over in that, uh, you know, we kind of went through uh, the 2018 land use approval and that was overturned uh, in both the district court and the Colorado Court of Appeals. And the 1978 special use permit is now ruling once again, uh, you know, that, that uh, we're still having, you know, major uh, issues concerning the dust and, uh, they're over their 9,500 head count and there's no sprinkler system. I mean, it's very minuscule. There's only, you know, five or six sprinklers and, and, you know, in their application, it says that there's supposed to be a sprinkler in each pen and they added on-site housing um, even after, uh, you know, that was added to uh, the land use code in the year 2000 when they adopted the land use code. And uh, there's off-site wastewater ponds uh, there's offsite freshwater uh, holding facility uh, that's very large. I think it's like 35 acres. Um, they also have a model years airfield on site, which is like a community facility that they can uh, fly like radio controlled airplanes at. Uh, <clears throat> there's multiple small feed yards located uh, around the feedlot on separate parcels, um, you know, that hold, you know, three or four hundred head and uh, are on separate parcels and they're all confined. It's not like they're grazing and um, there's uh, they've recently been cleaning out their wastewater ponds that are located off site, which are supposed to be located on site. And uh, they've totally destroyed the road surface. I mean, uh, I know one of my neighbors was like even concerned about driving her car down it because of how destroyed the road surface is. I mean, they've been hauling, uh, hauling the sediment out of that pond. Um, you know, it, it, uh, you know, like a hundred carts of the stuff per day. Um, and, you know, they, they, I recently saw that they had a, uh, another individual living off or on in a fifth wheel trailer on their site kind of. So I don't know if that's an employee or what the deal is, but it's been there for a couple months. And, and I just was wondering if the commissioners had any comments on that, or, uh, you know, if, if this is on your guys' radar at all. I imagine I'd be the first one to respond. Hello, Clayton. Nice to hear your voice. And as I mentioned in um, my text response to you, I'd be interested. I mean, you've just shared some of the concerns you have. I'd be interested to, um, you know, get your current thoughts on on how we're going to address some of that. I I know that you've re I believe you've reached out to both Kristen and Jody, and, and they can certainly speak for themselves. Uh, and I also mentioned this to our director of um, uh, community planning infrastructure and resources, Lori Kadrich said, you know, you've reached out and I appreciate your, your due diligence on this. So number one, it, it would be helpful to, uh, you know, get your current idea, you know, your thoughts on what, you know, what are the, you know, we've, we've been talking about this. I've got, a, I've, I've tried to be supportive of your efforts. I'm also mindful of, of um, the, the Horton feedlot, you know, as a business okay. and what, what, what they do. Uh, so that would be very helpful, and and I'm more than willing to discuss it more with my commissioner colleagues, and and maybe there's we we need to have a work session to, to get them totally up to speed on what's happening, and then what might some of the options be, 
you know, in terms of finding an equitable solution to this problem. You know, for example, Clayton, and we've talked about this a lot, and and um, but still, it's you know the concerns are still the ones that you've shared uh, on the dust issue. Um, you know, regardless of interpretations of special reviews and all that, it seems like there might be some kind of a, a, a way to address some of those dust issues. When I went out, as you know, I, I didn't time it right. Uh, there wasn't really uh, much of a problem with dust, but I know that certainly on windy days that can be a real big issue. But when I went out to visit you at your house and and all of that, so. That's my response, Clayton. I hope that's adequate right at this moment. And, and I don't know if the other commissioners want to sh share anything. Uh, yeah, Jody, yes, of course. Uh, thank you, um, Commissioner Cofalos, John. Um, thank you, Clayton, for coming this morning. And um, it sounds to me like you shared some new concerns, uh, especially with the offsite um, water treatment and hauling. Um, I didn't know if there's a lot of things here that maybe you could um, put those all in an email. I know you're really busy um, with your family and stuff. If you could put those in a quick email to all three of us, and then maybe we can pass um, that along to our, um, our staff director. And, and then I, I agree with um, Commissioner Kafalos. Maybe it's time for a, um, a meeting um, work session so we can um, take your concerns and get up, to, you know, kind of um, have this conversation, the three of us. And yeah, and Clayton, I, I... I know that um, you know some of the more recent emails that you and I have exchanged. You know, you did outline your ideas on on some possible options moving forward. I don't know if anything has changed from that previous information, but I, if, if you agree, I think it would be helpful to you know get yeah, the yeah. latest greatest. I, I, and, yeah, and I and can then, hire something up, you guys, and then I'll give you guys some reference. And and you know, another thing I'd like you guys to keep in mind too is that. Yes. Uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of information here, and then there's a lot of historic information too, and you know, a lot of the new decisions that the county's been rendering in the last five years don't align with a lot of the old decisions, and I'd like to kind of get through some of those contradicting, uh, uh, you know, issues because you know previously we had a feedlot that had to go through a special use application for 2,500 head. And, and now they just say that, yeah, well, it's allowed by right to have, you know, an additional six or 7,000 head of cows there. And that doesn't align with, with what, uh, you know, was the previous determinations on that, you know, as well as other special reviews, such as uh, like the Spark special review, you know, they had to, they had 35 acres of property of, of farm ground there and they only overwintered their cattle there. And they went through a special use permit for 300 head of cows. And, you know, that's, uh, that's, a lot different than the decisions that the county has been rendering down the last five years. And the definition has not changed. So I'm just wondering why the interpretation has changed. And you know, those are some things that I think that we really need to work through and, and maybe that you guys need to discuss as commissioners, as well as the county, because uh, I think it would be all fair to have the county issue, uh, you know, render the same decisions based off the same definition rather than reinterpreting it and issuing different decisions. Um, based upon that determination. So uh, I'll kind of encapsulate all this and send it to you guys in an email, and then uh, that'll give you guys something to reference. Clayton, thank you very much for, you've been pretty patient on your end. And, and again, I've, you know, I, part of our job is to try to make sure we understand a complex issue from all perspectives. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, I visited with you and I'm happy to visit again. Uh, you could try to get me out there on a windy day uh, I've also, you know, both Laurie Cadridge and I went out to the, you know, the feedlot site and walked around there. Um, and, and again, like, for example, no sprinkler systems. I, I know that that was one of the original uh, conditions of approval. And, and, and not to get into it right now, because I know there are at least two other questions that folks have raised um, uh, on vaccines and, and the vision for the county. But um, uh, as we've discussed before, you know the original pens they do have you know they do have sprinkler systems but I, I also on some of the newer pens you know they made the decisions to a different kind of way of of trying to address some of the dust issues in, in terms of the the fences the, the fencing but but looking forward to your email looking forward to engaging our planning folks and and then okay. getting these folks up to speed and seeing how we can revisit this thing and figure out 
you know, way forward. I hope, I hope that's okay, Clayton. Yeah, no, it sounds great. I mean, touch base on that and, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. And I really appreciate your guys' time. And I, we appreciate your time. Well, I'm noticing, Michelle, that um, there was a question from Gail Meisner, and I'm really glad she brought it up, and I'm, I'm glad she brought up the water storage question as well. But Gail is referencing that um, a 70-year-old family member, I think, of, yes, um, is, is Do you want me to read it out, Commissioner? Yeah, please help me out there, Michelle. Sure. Gosh. Um, Gail, Gail says that none of my family have been notified to receive a COVID vaccine, even though two are over 70. And I, I can offer a response there, but I wonder, Kristen, do you want to, you want to take this one? Sure, I'll try. And if I, and if I um, am not giving correct information, please, please feel free to correct me. Um, you know, I think that we had an update on, I think, was must have been Tuesday about, you know, the vaccine rollout. And it looks like, you know, we are trying to get, you know, everybody, but we're, we're not quite there yet. And so I, I don't know, Gail, if you have had an opportunity to sort of register on the website um, that we can, I think that Michelle could put uh, the, either the phone number or the link to the website on, because if people are sort of registered and haven't received a call about getting the the vaccine, then uh, the county can kind of look into it and help you navigate that that system. So, um, you know, I know some people have received it through wherever they go, you know, their medical system. So if you're like in UC Health or you're in Kaiser, you, you know, you may have gone through those routes um, or Salud also has, you know, vaccines, but, um, but please, um, you know, give them a call or they're even willing to text um, and, 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 and kind of walk people through that process. And I, I want to say that maybe about 35% of people over 70 have received the vaccine at this point. So you're, I mean, not that this is any consolation, but you're not alone in that. Um, and I know we're getting about, I want to say 6,000 to 7,000 vaccines a week that um, we are getting into folks' arms the minute they come into our county. So we're not wasting any, but the process is slow. And so, um, but, we, but Michelle did put in those, those website um, websites. And then if you're more comfortable talking on the phone, um, that, that number's there as well. But um, if you have been on a list for two or three weeks and you still haven't heard anything, please do call or contact them in some way. Uh, because they they do want to hear from folks that maybe maybe they have a wrong number for you maybe they have some you know information that's not um, you know current or some there there might be some mitigating reason mitigating circumstances why they haven't called you so uh, I know it's hard to be persistent and it it's really easy to be frustrated with this system um, my mom is 80 she just got her shot uh, last week or a couple days ago actually and so. Um, it is a slower process, but, but our intention is to get you your shots. So um, if you continue to have, um, you know, some issues, I mean, feel free to email me and I'm happy to, you know, do what I can to intervene as well. Um, but it's a slower rollout than we want for sure. And yet we are really trying to, um, you know, get these vaccines out as soon as they come to us. Yeah, Jody, something you want to add? Um, thank you, Kristen. You are correct on a lot of those um, issues. I want to add to that that um, um, the state and the federal government have promised to kind of, we'll see if it happens, but they've promised to increase the amount of vaccines we receive because we get those from the federal government and then the state to the state and the state processes out to the counties. And so we get we get that allotment of 6,000, but we've been told that over the next three weeks during this week and through the beginning of March, we should see an increase of 16% per week of vaccines handed out. So I'm hopeful that that list of 70 plus um, gets through a little quicker. I did have several folks, um, like I said, I took a lot of phone calls over the weekend and talked to constituents and a lot of them were on the vaccine issue. <coughs> Excuse me. And so those folks yesterday, um, they had been on the this, this system for weeks and um, about four or five of them texted me or called me yesterday and said, guess what, I got my call. 
today. So I felt that was a hopeful sign. Um, I did um, hear and see there's um, some photos. They started a drive through clinic out at the ranch and that went very well with the kind of the first rollout and all that information is on the website. So um, I think, um, I know it's hard to be, it, all of us, I haven't got my vaccine, my, my um, family members work in the ER. So I have some family members vaccinated um, and it's hard to be patient, but I know they're doing, they're working very hard and seven days a week trying everything they can to get shots into arms and get as many folks vaccinated as possible, especially our older population who are at higher risk. So thanks for that question though. I'm glad you asked that today. Thanks. And I would just simply add that um, uh, I, I concur, of course, with my colleagues here, uh, but it's also what I've understood too, Gail and, and, and friends, is that um, the website you know, the link for, to, to get into the, into the database is important. There's also another link on that vaccine information website, which is for agencies. So for example, if you're, um, you know, I, for example, I received an email with the Wrist Canyon Volunteer Fire District um, that they had been in the queue for a long time and uh, uh, they hadn't heard and they're, you know, they're frontline first responders and, and so there is an opportunity for agencies to uh, register to make sure they're in the queue. And, and in this case, we did confirm that they were and that they would be getting their vaccinations. And I know, we, I think Gary Green is still on from the you know, Wellington Fire District, uh, Fire Protection District. So I wanted to add that. And also my understanding too is it doesn't hurt if, if um, the family members in your, that are 70 plus, which is the phase 1A, it, you know, you know, registering or going into the, the county data um, link that that has been posted, but also contacting your healthcare provider, uh, and 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 so there's multiple ways to make sure. And then, as Kristen and Jody have suggested, if if, if there's a proper role for us to help you out, you know, make sure you get through some of this. And you know that they've changed the whole vaccination prioritization thing, and so we're it, you know it, with phase one A, as you all know the the emphasis has been on getting the frontline, the folks who have the most the most potential for contact with COVID-19, the healthcare workers. And I think we've covered that in a, in a you know, pretty much gotten most of those folks vaccinated. Uh, another high priority was uh, the, the, the people, the residents in skilled nursing facilities or, or, or nursing homes. Uh, and I think there are 54 in Larimer County and, and most of those folks have gotten their vaccinations, you know, first doses. And I think a chunk of those folks have gotten their second doses and then the 70 plus, but the changes to the prioritization. Now we have, we're entering into phase 1B and now there's 1B1 and 1B2 and all this other stuff. But as of next Monday, February 8th, uh, it, it looks like because we have more certainty about vaccine supplies, et cetera, We'll be looking at um, still getting the 70 plus folks vaccinated first and second doses, but now we'll be opening it up to um, 65 to 70, as well as um, uh, school teachers, uh, as well as childcare workers, as well as um, uh, essential workers, and and uh, hoping we get you know closer to um, uh, people who work in grocery stores, for example. There they're at great risk and. And I, we've received some emails, you know, there's an equity issue here. So I, I wanted to share that and I appreciate that question. I'm glad, again, because the vaccine thing is really important. And I think that's what we need to keep doing along with our public health stuff uh, to keep the, the numbers going better and, and making sure that people aren't getting sick from COVID. I mean, we've had two, we're now at 201 deaths. Uh, most of those folks are people that are 70 and older. And that's why you know, we've been focusing on that cohort of people. If I may, Michelle, the, the next question I think I saw in the Q&A was from Lene Warden, and she asked about the, uh, the vision of Larimer County. Isn't that right, Michelle? You are correct, Michelle. Well, I think the, the best way to answer that, Lene, is um, uh, I think, as you know, that um, the, 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 the Board of Commissioners, certainly the previous board, in, in July of 2019, I believe it was, we approved and adopted the um, updated comprehensive plan, the master plan. And, and that's that, you know, that's, that informs our land use code update. 
And that's kind of the visionary document. You know, where do we want to see the county in 20 years? So I would um, refer you to that document. And, and um, you know, what was identified through a two and a half year process that informed the adoption of that updated master plan uh, was a lot of community input from folks down on the front range and certainly folks up in the, in the mountain communities. But the six areas that were identified uh, include community, the economy, health and social, housing, infrastructure, watersheds and natural resources. And if you go to the comp plan document, you'll see an, an awful lot of details, uh, you know, policy details about those six areas. And so, for example, you'll see that one of the identified um, uh, community issues is housing. And, and so that is informing uh, how we update our land use code as it relates to, you know, um, uh, affordable housing. You know, can we incentivize uh, small square foot footage homes? Uh, can we revisit the whole idea of accessory dwelling units? You know, a variety of other things as it relates to the land use code and also as it relates to the county uh, potentially putting more skin in the game with money. Uh, you know, we have set aside some dollars to look at child care, to look at housing, and, and to look at um, uh, you know, post-secondary education training opportunities. So that's, that's my answer to that question is that the comp plan is really the, the, the best thing to see what the vision is. Uh, and, and that's where we wanna see the Darn County in 20 years and as we get there. Are there other things, Michelle? Other yes, questions? Commissioner, we have two other questions. So I'm not sure if Kent here has a comment. I'm not sure if it's a question so much, but of course I'll allow you guys to respond. Um, not a question, but regards to road damage. So we were talking earlier about road damage um, with regards to the feedlot. Um, when the county grades the road, the substandard debris will get incorporated with the road base and deteriorate the road further. Not sure if you have any response to that, Commissioner. But could you repeat that again, Michelle? Absolutely. Let me pull it back up here. Thank you. Gosh. Um, in regards to road damage, when the county grades the road, the substandard debris will get incorporated with the road base and deteriorate the road further. Well, not, um, not really a question, but yeah. a comment. And if Kent wants to reframe that as a question, then my response would be, um, that's an example of a question that it would be best to refer to a, a subject matter expert. And that would be our director of road, road and bridges, Todd Jurgens, who I'm sh sure could answer um, or comment on that statement or answer any question uh, much better than I can. So next question is from William. William says, we are located in the Waverly area and zoned agriculture. What are the options for Wellington as they consider reaching out for zoning for extending into city limits? Not sure I 100% follow that, but I'm hoping you do, Commissioner. Well, yes, uh, me too. <laughs> and, and again, if there are things that we're not adequately answering, um, uh, you know, we can follow up. But I think that's frankly a question for the the, the, I don't know, there's at least one person from the town of Wellington, there's Patty Garcia. Uh, it, it's a question for her to respond to more directly. But what I, would, what I would say is that as part of the adoption of the um, phase one of the land use code, we also adopted some changes to the uh, uh, zoning districts. And, <laughs> and I know we've created, you know, some flexibility for places like Waverly, but I'll stop there. And, and, and again, all of this information about the land use code. I need to talk. Zoning districts are um, on our website and the planning website. Patty, please. Thank you. You bet. Was I unmuted all that time? No. That's okay. Okay. Sorry. No, I have family here and I'm like, guys, be quiet. I need to talk. <laughs> it's all good, but please identify um, yourself. Patty. So I think this question is uh, Patty Garcia, Wellington Town Administrator. And um, I think the question is coming up because of uh, we had something recently on the town board agenda related to the three mile zone for annexations. 
and there's been some confusion about what that means and and what are what we um, can and cannot do. And so there has been enough um, um, re requests from the citizens that we'll be pre presenting that separately um, at about at a board of trustees work session so that the community can understand exactly what that means and how that could impact them. Um, so that's that's what it's generating from is that three mile annexation zone. So we're, we're addressing that at, a, at our staff level so we can bring it forward um, to the community. Thank you, Patty. That's very helpful. And I wonder um, when you'll be bringing this up at one of your next uh, town board meetings. Uh, could you let me know? And if possible, maybe I could uh, I could participate and, and listen so I better understand about this three mile annexation area. Absolutely. Absolutely. I will get you added on. Gosh, thank you, Patty. Thank you for that you answer. Bet. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It's always nice to have uh, someone jump in and save us, right? Um, our next, and it's again, this isn't necessarily a question, but uh, but a statement, and hopefully you guys want to respond. Gail says, I hope the two new commissioners will become involved in the Ag Advisory Board in order to become educated about the Ag issues in Lamar County. Uh, yes, of course, Jody. yeah, go for it. Um. It's, it's kind of uh, interesting. I guess I'd plan to keep up on that board. I know Commissioner Cavalls will bring us up to date on the issues. Um, him and I both um, were interested. Unfortunately, we all can't be on all the boards and commissions, but it was one that I was interested in as liaison in too. So it is one that's um, important to me. I am a landowner. Um, out, I, I live west in unincorporated Lamarack County and I have ag land around me. And my husband and I tried to um, quote unquote farm, but actually I think we're trying to be more gardeners sometimes with about a half acre. And so um, uh, we lease some water um, from the nearby ditch and all those other things. So I, I am a little bit familiar with that. I'm friends with many um, folks around the county that um, have agricultural um, businesses and, enter um, and you know in the industry. And I have attended some of the Farmer Alliance meetings um, over the last two or three years. So I've been in contact with them. So, but yes, I would like to stay a, a, a prize and I'll probably um, try to read the minutes um, and maybe I get on that email list so I can stay up to, um, maybe Michelle, you can add me to their email list um, so I can stay up to um, rest. But I know Commissioner Kafals will do a great job as liaison and keep us abreast of what's going on. But feel free to reach out if there's some issues you want me to um, take a closer look at. Yeah, Kristen. I'll be quick, but thank you, Gail. And you, you know, absolutely am interested in these issues and want to be um, up to speed on that. And again, like Jody, happy to have a conversation with you and happy to follow um, what's happening on the Ag Board. Uh, um, I don't have land. I do live in the city, so um, I have a decent amount to learn. Um, but um, but it's important to me that we, you know, conserve Ag lands. And so, um, you know, I will make sure that I'm. I'm keeping that in mind and that I'm um, making sure that I kind of keep up to date on the issues that are uh, concerning folks in ag. And I would just say that the next, you know, the Ag Advisory Board meets um, every two months. And I, I don't remember off the top of my head the next meeting is, but it's in March, uh, early March. And um, one of our guests will be the director. Um, of natural resources, uh, Gail and Figs, and I think Megan Flanagan would, that deals with our open space. Because one of the issues, and Gail knows this, when she served for many years on the Ag Advisory Board, and, and thank you for your service there. Uh, but one of the issues is how do we improve communication where it makes sense between, uh, you know, for example, Ag Advisory, the Open Lands Advisory Board, and then another board that I, I, I switched from the Land Stewardship Advisory Board, which deals with noxious weed management, um, uh, to the um, Parks Advisory Board. And I attended my first meeting the, uh, the other night, uh, maybe it was Tuesday night. And so, so we, you know, we, yeah, and these folks, obviously they're interested in, and that is part of our vision, uh, you know, our vision for the county is that we do what we can to protect, um, uh, working farms and ranches, and that is actually included in our uh, open space or uh, master plan. 
Thank you, Gail. And just for your information, John, that meeting is on March the 10th at 1230. Gosh, yeah, March the 10th. And and again, all of these meetings, um, they, they have a public comment component and uh, there are ways to get the link and participate. And of course, Gail knows how to do that. Thank you. So I am not seeing any open questions and I am going to look to my participant list to see if I have any hands raised. And I don't see any at the moment. So I don't know if there's anything else you want to do. Oh, we got one. It always, whenever I say that we get one, <laughs> we get one. So it looks like Paul has a question and Paul, I, you're going to have to unmute yourself now. Go ahead. Well, you know, I was late joining the meeting, um, but I was, uh, and maybe I missed, maybe I missed it. I didn't know if there was any, uh, anything raised again about the Horton feedlot and overpopulation of cattle. John, hey, you're, yeah, here you go. Yeah, hey, Paul, thank you. And the short answer is, yeah, uh, Clayton Roth um, uh, uh, presented, you know, some of the concerns and we did, um, determined a course of action uh, as far as getting any new information uh, and, and looking at how we could revisit that. And, and so that was, we did have that conversation, Paul, yes. Okay, good. Uh, my apologies, I just noticed that uh, it's almost impassable some of the uh, county road up there, they've been doing quite a bit of work. So I just wanted to make sure it was addressed and uh, sorry for taking up the extra time. Not, not at all, sir. And, and Michelle, could we make sure there's been a couple of references to the county road work up there. Um, I'm wondering if that's the Al Canyon road work or, or I know we're probably starting to look at the uh, intersection of um, uh, County Road 9 and Al Canyon, you know, in relation to the, uh, the landfill site. But I, I'd like to better understand about the, the road thing there. Um, you know, one thing, before, uh, if, if there, there might be some other questions and, and all that, but I did notice on the attendee list, and I want to acknowledge that I think we have at least, um, uh, we have the town administrator, and I'm glad she spoke, Patty Garcia, but well, we have three, at least three um, uh, town trustees, Wellington town trustees, uh, John Gator, uh, Ashley McDonald, and Rebecca Kinney, so thanks for participating, and Certainly, if you have any input, um, we're happy to receive that. And, 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 and John, just to follow up, I, again, I'm more than happy to meet with folks or meet with you. And as we discussed uh, you know, earlier in January, uh, but I wanted to acknowledge those folks that are on the, in the meeting. Uh, are there other questions at this point, Michelle? It looks like... Um... John Gator has his hand raised now. Oh, so, there you go. John, I have given you permission. Go ahead. All right, John. Excellent. So I just did want to thank you again, Commissioner Kapalis, for taking the time to come out and speak with members of the community and uh, just to listen to concerns. It really means a lot to uh, me as a local official to have you as our county commissioner coming out here and did want to thank uh, Commissioner Matt Shattuck McNally and Kish Commissioner Stevens for coming out as well and joining us. It's great to um, see the two of you and congratulations again. And I, I'm not positive but it sounds like i think we're trying to maybe get something set up where we can sit down and chat with our board and the county commissioners which i think would be fantastic just so that we can kind of go over some of the things that we're seeing here locally things that we're working towards i know there's several projects the dams that you mentioned earlier the the intersection near the high school that we're kind of working together on so would love to see us be able to continue to work towards that so thank you thank you town trustee john gator uh, I appreciate our relationship and our friendship. I, um, you caused me to think of a couple of other really quick things. One is that um, uh, a, a bit of good news um, on the road, Highway 1 leading up to Wellington before we get to the, that intersection you referred to, but the intersection of uh, Douglas Road, um, Douglas Road and Highway 1, uh, we, you know, we had an update on that, but that, that um, traffic light that signaling, you know, putting in the signals for that, that's going to start uh, in, in the next few months. And, and um, so, so that's, an, I think that will help with our road safety and, and looking forward to meeting with you and your fellow uh, town trustees. And, you know, I, I'm somewhat 
maybe I shouldn't say this, but cautiously optimistic that hopefully by summertime, um, maybe sooner, uh, we can uh, actually resume these meetings um, at, at the T-Bar. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I mean, at, at this point, I assume that the T-Bar Inn is, went through our level up program and I and, uh, hope they did, and that they're able to function at the level yellow and, and therefore have more indoor capacity. And I know they've set up that outdoor dining area. So I'm hoping we can actually do a lot of these meetings more, uh, more in person. And um, well, enough said, yeah. Thank you, thanks, John. Commissioner, we do have a new question. Oh my. Um, and it's for all three of you. When will our new commissioners be holding their own meetings like this for their regions? Or will this be a team effort for a while, which she quoted is very cool? So. Um. Yeah, to, yeah, I, I see your finger there. Uh, you don't, uh, but just uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you have any ideas on that, but we are looking at the whole community outreach thing in terms of the commissioners. Um, and I know that some folks have already started their own meetings and that's why Jody wants to talk about hers, please. Um, I'm more than welcome to, to join Commissioner Kofalas um, monthly. I think this is great. I love hearing about the other parts of the county. It's really important to me to hear from you folks and hear about your concerns. I do have my first one. Uh, Michelle, I, I need to ask about <laughs> if it's on, should I just put it on my page or how that's on the Facebook page so I can have that out? Um, but I do have one this Saturday from 8.30 to 9.30 and my guest will be um, Mayor Jackie Marsh and um, it will be kind of our first one and I'll be doing one. Um, we're still setting up the date um, up uh, with the mayor of, of Estes Park um, in about two weeks, I believe. And um, that will be around the lunch hour. I just have to get her to um, double check her schedule. And then um, we'll be one with the um, birth of mayor after that. And so I will probably, we're um, waiting to see, we're gonna get some feedback and see how, how often folks I know want to do this. I know Commissioner Kofalas um, does this monthly. And again, we're having this conversation um, at our retreat, I think, talking about how we're going to do this together and separately. But I think all uh, for myself, and I, I won't, um, you know, speak for, for both of them, but I think we're all on the same page to be accessible and then be out doing outreach and um, connecting with the whole county and, and hearing from folks um, as much as possible and and trying to um, share some of the things going on and hearing from um, every area of the county and their concerns. So um, I think, Michelle, if you would put that um, link in the chat, that would be great. Everyone's welcome, even if it's for a different area, you're always welcome to join any of those. I welcome your um, feedback and your, and your comments at any of those events. So thank you. Commissioner, I just shared the link for um, the page where we put all of your guys' community meetings. Thank you, Michelle. Um, so folks can check yeah. that out as you know, as you guys get more established in, in your um, schedule for these types of things. So folks Thanks, can Jody. Check that. Kristen, is there anything you want to add to that or sure, I guess I um, thought we would were coordinating them and so I didn't know we had added some to the schedule. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't overlapping and overburdening Michelle with, with, you know, <laughs> so um, I will clearly have some, I haven't put any on the schedule yet. Um, it's something that I did while I was a city council member. So it's something I have every um, intention of continuing. Um, happy to also have um, ones with the three of us, you know, we, we talked about doing that potentially quarterly. So I'm, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, you know, I think it's important for us to hear from folks all over the county, even though we're representing different districts. And so, um, but yeah, um, please, please stay tuned, I guess. <laughs> I would say for, for what I have, would have coming up. Um, there again, don't want to overlap um, John's or Jody's so we can have the support, especially while we're still doing these via uh, Zoom. Um, it'll be a little different story when we're actually able to meet in person, which will really be nice. But um, so yes, I will be having them as well. Yes, it is a little difficult right now because um, you guys want to do them on Saturdays, which is fine with me. I love these things. But we're also trying not to overlap with other elected officials that are doing Saturday, you know, a lot of Saturday meetings going on. Um, so for folks to know that it's, it's we're, we're trying to coordinate everything so we're not overlapping with other meetings you might want to attend 
Um, and it's definitely a an in progress thing right now. Yeah, well said, everyone. And and so that's a, that's our goal. And uh, we just want to make sure we're coordinating as much as possible. And you know, post I, I, again, I I can think I can say this post COVID nineteen pandemic. Um, you know, when I started doing these things, they were I, I think I was doing five a month, and that's because like the we've consolidated some of these, you know, because it's all virtual. But I would do a you know one in Laporte, you know, for folks up the you know up the canyons and in the town of Laporte, and then I would I would do a Fort Collins one, um, and and then we would even do a you know we would do one in over in Waverly, and then kind of separate with um, and actually I'd even go up to Buckeye, um, but so we have to navigate all of that. Um, while we're in, you know, doing virtual, and at, when the time comes when we're able to do more of this in person, uh, so I, I wanted to. Um, there may be some other questions, but you know, folks might be ready to move on. But I did want to make a couple of comments. So I think it was um, Fire Chief the, the Gary Green who suggested that at the next meeting, uh, and, and maybe Michelle, you and I can discuss how to do that. Um, that we could have someone from the state demographers state demographer's office um, to give us an update on on, on some of the recent uh, population economic trends. Uh, we can also do that, I think, within our own shop, you know, with um, somebody from our economic and workforce development. But that was one request for the next meeting, and that is to have someone from the state demogra demographer's office, and we can follow up on that and see uh, whether that would be the state, demogra state demographer herself or or perhaps somebody from that office. And if that's and, not possible, oh, go ahead, Michelle, please. I know the state demographer is me. That's so echoey. I'm sorry. I know the state demographer, they're doing a lot of census stuff right now. So it might have to be something we push out until they're kind of through getting numbers to um, the districts and, and the counties and the municipalities. But I just wanted to throw that out there that oh. um, we might have to push it out a little bit until maybe later spring yeah but I'm not sure. yeah and that's a good point I, I think we could still um you know make the ask and then they could tell us if they're really overburdened with the uh the work that needs to be done on the census and and again the fallback there and I don't know if it's so much of a fallback is that we could ask um uh folks from our our, our data analysis folks from our economic and workforce development uh, to come and give us an update um you know it, the last time we had, uh, we get that report that shows a lot of interesting demographics. That was in 2019. We haven't been able to, you know, do that again with hot paper copies and all that. But we can, we can also address the issue, I think, in house. But we'll start with the state demographers, and then, and then Michelle, we can figure out who the best person is, um, and, you know, to, to pro provide an update. The the second thing I wanted to put out there, colleagues and friends, is. Uh, 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 would it be helpful to have um, to ask the uh, the uh, the new director, the solid waste director? I think his name is is it Dwayne Dwayne Haney or something like that. Anyway, would it be helpful uh, to have that person come and and introduce themselves and um, uh, give an update on on the uh, uh, the solid waste uh, recovery efforts? Uh, so I, I'll put that out there and. And uh, that's a suggestion. And unless somebody says, oh, no, gosh, no, uh, I'll follow up on that. And then um, I don't know whether for maybe, the, and that's sufficient, but whether or not folks would be interested in having someone from the public health department give us the latest and greatest news, um, you know, early March, where we are with vaccinations and, and uh, metrics, you know, in terms of uh, keeping people healthy and safe. We could also ask Tom Gonzalez. Uh, or someone from his office to participate. So those are three, I think, three ideas. And I do, I do know that Tom Gonzalez agreed to participate in our February 25th uh, Red Feather Lakes um, community conversation. So Tom will be there. And uh, Jody, yeah. I just, um, thank you, Commissioner. I just want to remind everybody that this Friday, or today, actually, at um, the um, Larimer County Department of Health 
is doing a online forum regarding the vaccines from, I believe, 4.30 to 5.30, and um, we'll be taking questions and getting updates. And um, we found out um, he announced that, um, I think, Tuesday. And so we'll try and get the word out, but it'll be a really um, great way to get an update and hear and ask your questions. I believe it's going to be, um, it's on Facebook, but also it's on the website, right, to how to sign up or how to find that. So I don't know if you can Michelle, I keep asking you to put things in, but I think that would be really important if you have questions, there is an opportunity today starting at 4.30. And it will be um, Director Gonzalez and his staff. And um, I think it'd be really, um, really important and great information. Thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. I'm glad you brought that up. And I think that there was also, in addition to an article in the, in the Colorado, and at least today, um, at least the electronic version about the affordable housing uh, survey, I think there was also a, an article about the um, the forum, the COVID-19 vaccine information forum that, that Jody uh, referenced. So if you if you get the newspaper, uh, please please check that out. And again, to go back to the housing thing, I, I really, really hope that folks from the Wellington area, the rural areas will spread the word and, and participate in that survey because we'll do a better job if we know, you know what, what the issues are for folks and and what are some ideas on how to solve those issues or address them? Well, we have a couple of things in the Q and A, Michelle. No. Oh. I'm You're muted. muted, Michelle. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, That's I'm fine. Barb. I'm looking for the link right now. I'm I'm working on it. And, and um, Barb, there should be. A, I don't know if you guys can access the Colorado one. It should be in there as well, but. But I'm sure Michelle will find it. And uh, um, but yeah, that's that's this afternoon. I'm looking for it. I'm actually about ready to text um, my counterpart at the health department right now. Jody, Jody you're uh, you're muted, so I, I can't I can't lip read. You're muted. Um, um, Michelle, I'm going to send you the link they sent me last night. That's perfect. Thank you. I don't know if that's. Uh, um, if that's a panelist for us to uh, to attend, but um, <laughs> sorry, folks. Was it via email, Jody? You're muted again. Sorry. Um, yes, it was via email. Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. I found it. So Here we'll call, is the call in information. Okay, I'm gonna check it, see what the link does. Okay, so I am going to, I will push this out right now. Thank you, thank you, Jody. Yeah, and I think we'll, um, I think we'll begin to wrap up here. I noticing that that Barb is on the call. Nice to hear from you, but uh, living up the canyon, I know that one of the issues up there was um, the Cameron Peak fire did a lot of damage on the the uh, CenturyLink uh, lines, uh, phone lines. And so folks have been without landline service for quite a while. Um, the update that we received recently is that they got all the um, replacement materials. Uh, they should have received them by now. And Hopefully that problem will get addressed. But in the meantime, we're trying to find out if there's a way to um, deploy a mobile Wi-Fi unit uh, up the fire station there. But but again, this has been going on for months. So we've been, I, I would think CenturyLink has a responsibility to um, you know, provide a backup, but it looks like some folks have been without phone line service for a while. Uh, I just wanted to mention that. So unless there's anything else, um, Commissioner, it looks like someone has their hand up. Do we want to oh, take that question? Yes, please, of course. All right, Daniel, I have given you permission. Now you just need to unmute yourself. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank Daniel, you very much, Michelle. Is that working better now? That's working better now. Thank you. You unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm going to turn up my volume. Just a minute. Yep, that's fine. Okay, now everything's working. I just had a quick inquiry for all three commissioners. 
uh, in regards to that important feedlot uh, issue, you know, all the neighbors were pretty much denied uh, uh, review an appeal to that use by right determination. Uh, we'd like to definitely have that revisited if all possible. Or any, or any determination thus far uh, provided by the planning department. Thank you, Daniel. Commissioners, anything you wanna add? Oh, thank you, Daniel. I appreciate your comment. And as we stated earlier, um, we'll, you know, we'll look at what our options are. And I think um, your son, well, Clayton will provide us with more, you know, some things in writing and we'll, we'll go from there. But um, your, your request is very specific, uh, revisiting the use by right determination. And I, I, I need to make, I need to go back and, and it's not that simple, but, but maybe it is and we'll find out. Thank you very much. And um, I just wanted to say, if, if that's all right, um, John, that um, thank you, Daniel. And, and I didn't respond last time Clayton spoke, but just um, we're, we are aware of the issues, but we're, we'll have Clayton write us a, an email that can be forwarded. And um, being fairly new, I don't know what we need to do, but we're certainly aware of the issue and we, we understand the difficulties that you and your family are having. And so I think uh, we'll, we'll kind of talk with staff about the you know best way that we can um, address some of the issues that, you, that you're facing. So, um, but I appreciate you coming on and um, talking to us about, um, about that and keeping that in our, fresh in our minds because um, it is something that, you know, I've, um, I, I learned about over the past couple months and, and that um, I'd like to address um, and figure out how to, how to give you some, some uh, resolution on this issue, which I know that you've been seeking. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Daniel. I, well, I appreciate you coming and saying this, and we're we're definitely um, welcoming the conversation we can have as all three of us as commissioners. Thank you for being here today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, everybody is very nice to each other. That's good. We need more kindness and and civility with each other. So thank you all. I don't think there are other uh, questions. I hope we've adequately addressed things, and we will look towards. Um, having you know some information about uh, demographics uh, population economic information uh, we will um, invite the new director of our solid waste department to come and um, and I'll give some thought to uh, you know we could also invite Tom Gonzalez or somebody from the health department I mean that by March 4th hopefully we've gotten through phase 1 b1. You know, and, and all the teachers have been vaccinated. Um, you know, a broader swath of folks that are older adults uh, have been vaccinated, and all the frontline folks, uh, and th that our numbers continue to be good as far as hospitalizations. And you know, we did exceed 200. We're at 201 deaths. Uh, so there are folks that are, are really um, impacted by this, and we're also very cognizant of the equity issue in terms of vaccinations and and so we're trying to uh we we have hired a new person outreach person that is reaching out to certain communities uh latinx communities etc to make sure that folks are being vaccinated uh, so with that said michelle thank you very much as always thank you to baby yoda i'm glad that baby yoda is with us uh, thank you commissioner shaddock mcnally and Stevens and I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time. And I think this is good. And we need to just talk it through some more um, and make sure we're all you know, working together on how do we connect with folks. I, I wish you all a good day and um, please take care until next time. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks for coming out today. <laughs>